Chapter 3 Stoichiometry of Formulas and Equations A chemical equation uses formulas to express the identities and the quantities of substances involved in a physical or chemical change. Here is an example of a chemical equation. Now at a molecular level, this equation means that one molecule of hydrogen, so there's a coefficient here, means one molecule of hydrogen uh, molecule. So hydrogen molecule has two hydrogen atoms. Here, or also one, that means one molecule of fluorine. So fluorine molecule has two fluorine atoms. It forms, here you have two. So two means two molecules of hydrogen fluoride. And you can see on the left side, one molecule of fluorine has two hydrogen atoms. On the right side, you also have one and two. So the atoms of hydrogen uh, are conserved. Similarly, the uh, fluorine atoms on the left side, two. On the right side, also two, one and two. So you have two molecules two molecules of hydrogen fluoride molecule, okay? So this is at molecular level. We're talking about how many molecules, reactants, to form how many products, molecule at the molecular level. Now, at the macroscopic level, this coefficient can mean the moles. Uh, so it means one more of hydrogen molecule, one more of hydrogen fluor of fluorine molecule forms two moles of hydrogen fluoride. The advantage of, uh, at the macroscopic level is that you can measure the weight. Okay, Hydrogen molecule has a molecular weight 2.016 gram. So if you weigh 2.016 uh, gram of hydrogen, you get one more. Similarly, if you weigh 38 grams of fluorine molecule, you get one more fluorine. And you, by mixing these two, you will get 40.02 grams of hydrogen fluoride, which equals two moles of hydrogen fluoride. Here shows typical procedures to balance a chemical equation. First, you translate the statement into skeleton equation. And then you balance the atoms. Start with the most complex substance. I will explain uh, in the next slide what this means. And then you adjust the coefficient so that uh, it only contains the smallest whole number of coefficients. And then you check uh, to see if the equation is balanced. And finally, you specify the states of matter indicates uh, the physical state of each substance. Let's look at the example. Uh, suppose the statement is to mix magnesium oxygen to make magnesium oxide. So that's a statement. And you can translate this statement to a skeleton equation that is magnesium plus oxygen forms magnesium oxide. So that's a skeleton uh, equation that is not balanced yet. So next we balance all the atoms. We start with the most complex molecule. So here, the most complex formula is magnesium oxide because this formula contains two different types of uh, element. Now magnesium only one type of atom, oxygen, contains two atoms, but they are the same. So magnesium oxide is the most complex one. And we put one in front of it. Okay, so that's magnesium oxide. And then we look at the left side. Well, to balance magnesium, we have to put one also here. So magnesium atom is balanced. Now, what about oxygen? Well, magnesium oxide has only one oxygen, but the oxygen molecule has two, so we need to times one half. Okay, so this equation balanced all atoms. However, 
the equation contains a half, which is not a whole number. So next, we need to adjust the coefficient so that it only contains the smallest whole number. To do that, we need to times 2. So half times 2 will give you a whole number. But when you times 2 for oxygen, you must multiply 2 all, on all the atoms. So here you have times 2 on magnesium. And magnesium oxide, you also times 2. So the new balanced equation will be 2 magnesium plus oxygen. So 1, yeah, 1 oxygen forms 2 magnesium oxide. Now coefficient 1, you can omit that. Don't write it. Okay. Last step, state the physical state. So magnesium is a solid. Oxygen is a gas phase. Magnesium oxide is also a solid. And that is a complete uh, balanced chemical equation. Here shows a three-level view of the reaction we just balanced. Uh, two magnesium, one oxygen forms two magnesium oxide solid. So at the molecular level, uh, this is magnesium atom, so two of them, and uh, one oxygen molecule, which also contains two oxygen atoms. When they combine, uh, they form magnesium oxide magnesium oxide, so two formulas. So at the macroscopic level, uh, if you have a, a bar of magnesium metal, which may contain uh, two moles of magnesium atoms, and if you have oxygen gas inside uh, one more okay, oxygen molecules, and when they react, uh, the reaction is very violent. And you can see it emit light and the heat, okay? And eventually, it will give you white powder, which contains two moles of magnesium oxide. Uh, Sample problem 3.12. Within the cylinders of a cast engine, the hydrocarbon octane, one of many components of gasoline, mixes with oxygen from the air and burns to form carbon dioxide and water vapor. Write a balanced equation for this reaction. So first, let's identify the reactants and the products. The reactants are octane and uh, oxygen. Okay, they mix together. And the products uh, are carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so based on uh, these statements, we can write a uh, skeleton equation, and that is octane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water molecules. Next, we want to balance all the atoms. To do that, we start with the most complex molecule. So in this case, is the octane, because this molecule contains 8 carbon, 18 hydrogens. So that's the most com complex among all these four molecules. So we put one in front of it, okay? And then we balance either carbon or hydrogen because this molecule contains carbon and hydrogen. So we, let's uh, balance these two first. So in order to balance carbon, we look on the right side, uh, carbon dioxide contains one carbon. So in order to make eight, we need to times eight. Okay, so now carbon is balanced. Next is hydrogen. So left side, you have 18 hydrogen. Right side, you only have two in one water molecule. To make it 18, you need to times nine. Okay, so at this point, carbon, hydrogen, both are balanced. The only atom that is not balanced is oxygen. On the right side, uh, we have uh, for carbon dioxide, uh, two, carb two oxygen in one carbon dioxide. We have eight of them, so that is 16. Uh, 16 at oxygen atoms in carbon dioxide. In water, you have one oxygen, but nine of them. So you have nine oxygens 
uh, in water molecules. So the total oxygen on the right side is 16 plus 9 give you 25. So that's the oxygen on the right side. On the left side, left side, we have an oxygen molecule that contains two atoms, oxygen atoms. To make it 25, we need to multiply by 25 divided by 2. Okay, 2 times 25 divided by 2 is 25. So oxygen is balanced. So, so this equation balanced all atoms, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. However, the coefficient 25 divided by 2 is a fraction. So next step is to adjust. So here is the balanced equation, but we have a, uh, a coefficient that is not a whole number. We need to adjust to so that it only contains whole numbers. So to do that, we need to times 2. So this times 2, they will cancel, give you 25. But if you times 2 on oxygen, you need to times 2 on all uh, molecules. So this times 2 uh, for methane, uh, for octane, and here you times 2, 2 times 8 for carbon dioxide, 2 times 9 for water. And so that gives you uh, 2 uh, octane react with 25 oxygen molecule to make 16 carbon dioxide and 18 water molecules. Okay, so these equations is balanced, but the final step is specify the state. So octane is a liquid, so we put a liquid here, and oxygen is a gas, so gas phase here, okay, and it forms carbon dioxide gas and water uh, at this uh, engine high temperature is a vapor. So in the statement, it says a vapor. So we put a gas phase here. And this is the final uh, balanced equation for the reaction. This shows the reaction we just balanced. And at a molecular level, this equation means that two molecules of octane and 25 molecules of oxygen will uh, form 16 carbon dioxide molecules and 18 water molecules. Now if you count oxygen atoms, uh, each carbon dioxide contains two oxygen atoms and you have 25 of them, that gives you 50 oxygen atoms. And uh, on the right side, each carbon dioxide has two oxygen atoms and there are 16 of them, so that is 32 oxygen atoms due to carbon dioxide. And each water molecule has one oxygen, and we have 18 water. And so therefore, that's 18 oxygen. And if you add it together, that also gives you 50 on the right side. So the left side, 50 oxygen, you still on the right side also 50. Okay, so the carbon, uh, atoms numbers are the same left and the right. If you count the carbon, uh, they are the same on the left and the right, and the oxygen and the hydrogen also the same. And so all the atoms are conserved, conserved uh, during the reaction. Sample problem 3.13. The following molecular scenes depict an important reaction in nitrogen chemistry. The blue spheres represents nitrogen while the red spheres represent oxygen. Write a balanced equation for the reaction. Now first we need to identify the formulas for the reactants and the products. On the left side, we have four molecules. Okay? Each molecule contains uh, two blue spheres. Okay? Blue means nitrogen, so N2. And there are five uh, red spheres representing oxygen. So you have O5. So one molecule contains two nitrogen, five oxygen. And there are four molecules. So the left side is four and two O5. And the right side, uh, there are two types of molecules. One contains uh, one blue, which is one nitrogen, and two red, so two O2. And that's NO2 molecule. How many of them? So you have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. So eight and two and O two. Now there's another molecule uh, is two contains two red spheres and that is O two. Okay, how many of them? So here is one and here is another one. So two of them. And therefore, the balanced equation is 4N2O5 forms 8NO2 plus 2O2. Now, this is not the end because we want the smallest whole number. In pre previous examples, we may need to multiply a number to make them the smallest whole number. But in this case, we actually need to divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 give you 1. 8 divided by 2 give you 4. And 4 divided by 2 give you 2. So the uh, final equation should be 2 and 205, 4 and 0 02 plus 1 oxygen. So that is a balanced equation with the smallest whole numbers. In a balanced equation, the amounts of substance are stoichiometrically equivalent to each other, which means that a specific amount of one substance is formed, flown, produces, or reacts with a specific amount of the other. The quantitative relationships are expressed as stoichiometrically equivalent molar ratios that we use as a conversion factors to calculate the amounts. Let's use the propane combustion reaction as an example. The balanced reaction equation is one more of propane react with five moles of oxygen to form three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water molecules. Since one more of propane react with five moles of oxygen, we can say one more of uh, propane is equivalent to five moles of oxygen molecules. They are equivalent because whenever you consume one more propane, it will uh, also consume five moles of oxygen and it forms three moles of carbon dioxide. So it is equivalent to three moles of CO2 and which is equivalent to four moles of water. Okay, so moles of molecules. So five moles of oxygen is equivalent to four moles of water. Okay, so uh, we can use these, uh, these are called the stoichiometry, and we use them as conversion factors. Uh, an example is that suppose we have a lot of uh, propane, and we have 10 moles of oxygen. And the question is how many water, how many moles of water molecules will be produced? Okay, so we start with 10 moles of oxygen and we look at the stoichiometry between oxygen and uh, water. So four, five moles of oxygen is equivalent to four moles of water. So we can write the conversion factor. We can say five moles of oxygen is equivalent to four moles of water. Now we can also write four moles water is equivalent to five moles of oxygen. So two ways to write the conversion factor. Now which one? is the correct way to write for conversion between oxygen and water? Well, apparently the second one, because now we can uh, cancel moles of oxygen, moles of oxygen give you number of moles of water. So 10, so this times uh, uh, this conversion factor that give you 10 times four divided by five moles of water, okay? And that give you eight. So the answer is eight moles of water. So this is example that we use the state stoichiometry and to write the conversion factors. In the last slide, we show the stoichiometry 
of a balanced chemical reaction, the key is the molar ratio from balanced equation. And uh, it tells us the how many moles of a substance is equivalent to how many moles of another substance in the equation. And we can use that as a conversion factor. What if we know the grams of a substance, for example, the reactants, and we want to find out the grams of the product? Well, remember, uh, there's no stoichiometry between grams, it's the moles. And therefore, first step, you need to convert grams to moles. Okay, reactants, how many moles? All right, using molar mass. And then using the stoichiometry to find the how many moles of the products, and then you convert to grams. Okay, so first grams to moles. The stoichiometry is between the number of moles reactants and products. Similarly, if you know the number of molecules or atoms, you can also change, convert to moles. And then the stoichiometry, use the stoichiometry uh, to find the product and then convert to number of molecules or atoms. Sample problem 3.14. Copper is obtained from copper one sulfide by roasting it in the presence of oxygen gas to form powdered copper oxide and the gases sulfur dioxide. How many moles of oxygen are required to roast 10 moles of copper sulfide? So first we need to translate the statement into a uh, equation and balance it. Okay? So here is the balanced uh, equation and two moles of copper sulfide, three moles of oxygen, forms two moles of copper sulfide and two moles of uh, sulfur dioxide. Okay, It is extremely important that the reaction must be balanced, uh, otherwise uh, you, the stoichiometry will not be correct. So uh, looking at the relationship between copper sulfide and oxygen, we can see two moles copper sulfide is equivalent to three moles of oxygen and that can be written as a conversion factor so let's write 10 moles copper sulfide first okay we want to change to oxygen convert to oxygen so write a conversion factor and that is two moles copper sulfide is equivalent to three moles of oxygen and this way moles of copper sulfide cancel each other and that gives you moles of oxygen. And so you use 10 times 3 divided by 2. So that gives you 15 moles of oxygen. Sample problem 3.15. During the process of roasting copper sulfide, how many grams of sulfur dioxide form when 10 moles of copper sulfide reacts? So first, let's write the balanced equation. Okay, you have seen this already in the last question. And uh, in this question, the given is 10 moles of copper sulfide, that's the reactants. And the question is how many grams of the product sulfur dioxide. Now remember, the stoichiometry is between the moles of copper sulfide and sulfur dioxide. So two moles copper sulfide is equivalent to two moles of sulfur dioxide. Based on this stoichiometry, we can write a conversion factor. So we can convert 10 moles copper sulfide to how many moles of sulfur dioxide. And then we can convert moles to grams. So here is the first step. We start with 10 moles of copper sulfide. We write a conversion factor between copper sulfide and sulfur dioxide. So cancel the moles of copper sulfide. We get moles of sulfur dioxide. To convert moles to grams, we use molar mass. So one mole sulfur uh, dioxide is equivalent to 64.07 grams sulfur dioxide. So moles, moles cancel, give you grams of the product. Sample problem 3.16. During the roasting of copper sulfide, how many kilograms of oxygen 
are required to form 2.86 grams of copper oxide. So first, let's look at the reaction again. So this is the balanced reaction. And this time, what is given is a kilogram of copper oxide. So this one in kilogram, this is a given. And the question is, how many kilograms of oxygen is required? Again, it's kilogram. So compare this one with the last two. And this time is the given and ask are both mass. Okay. So as we already know, the stoichiometry is about moles, not about grams or kilograms. So according to stoichiometry, two moles of copper oxide is equivalent to three moles of oxygen, and that's the stoichiometry. So we need to convert grams to moles. And from moles, from stoichiometry, we can find moles of oxygen. And then when we have moles of oxygen, then we can change to kilograms of oxygen. So first, let's convert to moles. So we start with 2.86 kilogram of copper oxide, we first change to grams. So one kilogram, 1,000 gram. All right, so kilogram cancel, give you grams. And next we need to change to moles. We use molar mass. So molar mass is one more copper oxide, 143.10 gram copper oxide. So gram, gram cancel, give you moles. So at this point, we have 20 moles of copper oxide. And that's similar to the last question, that we know the moles of one substance. And we want to calculate the moles of another one. And uh, the stoichiometry is this two. Okay, we write a conversion factor. So we start with 20 moles copper oxide. We write a conversion factor, two moles of copper oxide, three moles of oxygen molecule. Okay, so this uh, step, uh, we cancel moles of, of one substance, we get moles of another one, which is oxygen. Okay, and then from moles of oxygen, we want to convert to grams. So you use molar mass. The molar mass of oxygen give you moles to grams. And then we uh, convert grams to kilogram. So one kilogram equals 1000 gram. So gram, gram cancel, give you kilogram. Okay, so that gives you a kilogram of oxygen molecule. So this question, uh, we start with a kilogram, we change it to moles, and the key step is this one. Okay, we, this step uses the uh, stoichiometry of this reaction between these two substances. Two moles copper oxide equivalent to three moles oxygen, and that's a conversion factor. So we can convert between one substance to another substance, okay? And then we have moles, then we can change to grams or kilograms. If a reaction undergoes several steps, we can combine all those steps together and obtain an overall reaction. Now, if a substance uh, appears as a reactant in one reaction, but as a product uh, in another reaction, then we should eliminate that substance. Sample problem 3.17. Roasting is the first step in extracting copper from checkerside, the O used in the previous problem. In the next step, copper oxide react with powdered carbon to yield the copper metal and the carbon monoxide. Write a balanced overall equation for the two-step process. Now the first step has already been discussed in previous problems, and the balanced equation is uh, like this. Two uh, moles copper sulfide react with three moles oxygen for two moles copper uh, oxide and the two moles uh, sulfur dioxide. Okay, so that's the first step. And the next step is a copper uh, oxide. So that's uh, this one. React with powdered carbon. So carbon is C to yield um, cup, uh, copper metal. So that's Cu and the copper monoxide. Okay, so put together, we have this equation. Copper, uh, mono, mono, uh, copper oxide 
uh, react with carbon, uh, you need two uh, copper okay, to balance the copper and uh, one carbon monoxide. So both of these equations are balanced. Now, if we uh, examine these two equations, you will find that uh, copper oxide serves as a product in the first reaction, but as a reactant in the second reaction. So this is a reactant and this is a product. And for overall reaction, this substance has to be eliminated, but they must have the same number of uh, coefficient. The coefficient must be the same, same number of moles. So in the product, it has two. And therefore, in the reactants, in the second reaction, we need to times two on all of this equation, uh, the uh, substance. So here is a new one. Okay, you have two copper oxide, two carbon, two copper, or four copper, and two copper, uh, carbon monoxides, because we times two on all the substance in the second reaction. Now, this is the first reaction, so we just copy it. First one, and this is the second one, but times two. All right, so now we can combine together, we cancel the common uh, substance, all right, and add uh, others. So add the reactants together, and that's the uh, reactants, and these are the product. Okay, so the uh, total or balanced overall reaction is two copper sulfide, uh, or three oxygen, two carbon, two sulfur oxide, four copper, and two copper monoxide. So far, we have assumed that reactants are present in the correct amounts to react completely. In reality, one reactant may limit the amount of product that can form. The limiting rea reactant will be completely used up in the reaction, and the reactant that is not limiting is in excess. Some of these reactants will be left over. Suppose we want to make a sundae, and the recipe calls for 12 ounces or two scoops ice cream, one cherry, and 50 milliliters syrup. Now we want to make two sundae, so everything needs to be doubled. And we prepared uh, syrup 100, that's exactly twice. Okay, so that will be used up. And for cherry, we actually prepared more than double uh, the recipe. Okay, the recipe needs one for one Sunday, two, we need a two. But we have six, so the four will be left over. Similarly, recipe needs two scoops ice cream for one Sunday. For two, we need a four. But we have eight, so four will be used and the four will be left over. And therefore, the ice cream and the cherry are both in excess amount. Syrup is the limiting reactant in this case that will be all used up. Sample problem 3.18. Chlorine trifluoride, an extremely reactive substance, is formed as a gas by the reaction of elementary chlorine and fluorine. The molecular scene shows a representative portion of the reaction mixture before the reaction starts. The question is A, find the limiting reactant. We'll first look at the reaction scene. And uh, the green represents chlorine. So this is a Cl2, that's a chlorine molecule. So you have three of them, so three chlorine molecule. And, uh, Yellow one uh, is fluorine, so F2. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So before the reaction starts, we have three chlorine molecule, six fluorine molecules. The question is, which one is the limiting reactant? To find the limiting reactant, we need to know the balanced reaction equation. Okay, the balanced reaction equation is like a recipe. All right, it tells you uh, what is amount uh, reactants of one substance relative to the other substance that will be reacted. So let's write the balanced reaction. So it says chlorine 
elementary chlorine. So it's here, uh, elementary chlorine and fluorine. So fluorine, this will give you chlorine trifluoride. So that is chlorine trifluoride. So the product is the most complex molecule uh, uh, among these three. So we start with chlorine trifluoride and we give it one. And uh, here, uh, to balance chlorine, we need to add half. And for fluorine, we need uh, three, but divide by two so that both sides has three. Okay, and now uh, we need to multiply a number so that it gives you the smallest the whole number. So the number is two. So you times two here, times two, times two, and uh, the balanced equation will be chlorine gas phase, fluorine. We have three of them. Note three over two times two is three. So three fluorine give you two chlorine trifluoride. All right, so that's the balanced uh, reaction. So both are, all these are gas phase. And we have this recipe. Now we can determine which one is the limiting reactant. Here again shows the balanced reaction equation. And there are three molecules of chlorine, six molecules of fluorine before the reaction start. To find the limiting reactant, uh, a useful strategy is to find the number of molecules of product that would form from given number of molecules of each reactant. So we look, look, uh, look at the chlorine. Suppose all chlorine react, three molecules chlorine react, how, how many molecules of product will form? And then we compare with the product formed by six molecules of fluorine. And then we can determine the limiting reactant. So first, let, let's look at the chlorine, all right? And we look at the chemical reaction, uh, stoichiometry. One chlorine is equivalent to two uh, chlorine trifluoride. So that's a uh, conversion factor. So we start with three molecules of chlorine and one molecule of chlorine, two molecules of chlorine trifluoride. And we cancel the chlorine, we get molecules of chlorine trifluoride. And that means that if three molecules of chlorine all react, then we will make six molecules of chlorine trifluoride. Similarly, let's calculate fluorine molecule. Okay, how many product will be generated by these uh, six molecules of fluorine? So six molecule fluorine, and we also look at the reaction equation, three fluorine e equivalent to two chlorine trifluoride. So we write this conversion factor and uh, the molecule of fluorine cancel give you chlorine trifluoride. And the answer is four, okay? So if all fluorine molecules are reacted, you get four molecules of product. If all chlorine molecules are reacted, you get more than four, you get six. And apparently this will be the limiting reagent. So chlorine, fluorine molecule will be the limiting rate. It produces less product than the other one. Okay, so the answer is fluorine uh, is the limiting reactant. Question B asks you to write a reaction table for the process. As usual, you first write the balanced reaction equation, and then you write the initial concentration. Here, chlorine, uh, three molecules, fluorine, six molecules before the reaction. And then how do you determine the change of the molecules? Well, this is determined by the limiting reactant, okay? Because that's the one that will be all consumed. The other one will be have left over. Okay, so to, uh, we already find out fluorine is the limiting reactant, and therefore the change must be negative six to consume all of them. Now, how do you determine chlorine? We look at the equation, stoichiometry, uh, one chlorine equivalent to three fluorine. And so 
uh, to find the chlorine, you need to divide by three. So six divided by three is two. Okay. You can also write the conversion factor. So six, you consume six fluorine. Okay. And the stoichiometry is uh, three uh, fluorine. Okay. Three fluorine, one chlorine, one chlorine. So fluorine cancel give you six divided by three chlorine, and that's two. So negative two. Similarly, you can determine the product. Again, you look at the conversion factor three and the two. So three, uh, six, you start with six fluorine. Okay, that's how much consumed. Times conversion factor here is six fluorine is equivalent to two chlorine trifluoride. So chlorine, chlorine cancel. All right, so three divided by, six divided by three is two. Two times two is four. So you get four. It's positive. And the final will be initial minus uh, change for the reactants. So for fluorine is zero. That's as expected. It's a limiting reactant. And the chlorine is three minus two, give you one molecule. And the product uh, zero, you start with zero. The change is four, so it give you four. All right, so that's the reaction table. Now in C, it asks you to draw a representative portion of the mixture after the reaction. Well, after the reaction, if you look at the final, you, you need to draw one molecule of chlorine as a leftover, and a zero fluorine, fluorine all consumed, and four molecules of chlorine trifluoride. And that should be in the mixture. Sample problem 3.19. In another preparation of chlorine trifluoride, 0.75 moles of chlorine react with 3 moles of fluorine. Find the limiting reactant. Write a reaction table. Now, just like the last question, to find the, the limiting reactant, we calculate the amount of product that can be formed from each given amount of reactant, and using this information to construct a reaction table. Here again is the balanced reaction equation, and uh, we want to calculate how many product will be formed by each of the reactants. So we start with the chlorine. Chlorine given was 0.75 moles, and uh, chlorine and uh, product stoichiometry is one, two. One chlorine, two molecule of chlorine trifluoride. So we write a conversion factor, moles chlorine cancel that give you moles of the product. So 0.75 moles chlorine will generate 1.5 moles of chlorine trifluoride. Similarly, uh, we have three moles of fluorine, okay? And the conversion factor is uh, three moles of fluorine or three molecules of fluorine is equivalent to two moles of chlorine trifluoride. So this is the conversion factor. So moles fluorine, moles fluorine cancel. And the three, three cancel give you two moles of chlorine trifluoride. And because fluorine given amount of fluorine will make more product than given amount of chlorine. And therefore, chlorine is the re limiting reagent. And uh, fluorine will have leftovers. <clears throat> so next, we draw the reaction table. Uh, as usual, we write a reaction, a balanced reaction. So chlorine, fluorine, three fluorine, two chlorine trifluoride. Initial concentration are given, chlorine and fluorine, these are given. And to determine the change, we, we use the limiting reactants. So limiting reactants is the chlorine. So all chlorine molecules will be consumed, and therefore the change will be negative 0.75. Now, this, uh, in this case, the stoichiometry is quite simple. One chlorine is three fluoride, and so it's three times of chlorine, and the change will be three times uh, 0.75, and that gives you 2.25. Of course, you can write uh, the uh, conversion factor also, okay? But this, uh, this, this case is simple. You can simply multiply by three. And the product also, <clears throat> this is twice 
of chlorine. So you times two, and that gives you 1.5. And the final is for reactants, you uh, minus, you give zero. And that's the limiting reactant. And three minus 2.25 give you 0 0.75. And the product is 1.5. Sample problem 3.20. A fuel mixture used in the early days of rock tree consists of two liquids, hydrogen and uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide, which ignite on contact to form nitrogen gas and water. Now first, let's write the balanced equation based on this statement. So the reactants is N2H4, N2O, O4, product is N2 and H2O. So here is the uh, skeleton reaction. Let's balance the atoms. Okay, we start with N2H4. We put a one in front of it. Okay, and this molecule has two elements, nitrogen and hydrogen. Now nitrogen is, is not the one we want to start with because on the left side, we have two molecules both contains nitrogen. So this kind of elements is not the one you want to start with. A better one is the hydrogen, okay? So let's balance hydrogen. So the left side has four hydrogen atoms. The right, right side water has two hydrogen atoms. So we need to times two so that both sides have two or four hydrogen atoms, okay? Next, let's balance oxygen. Right side has two oxygens, so this one has two oxygens, and the left side has four, okay? And therefore, we need to divide by two, so times one half. So oxygen is balanced. Now let's balance nitrogen. Now left side, this molecule have two nitrogen, and this one is two times half, is one. So the total is three nitrogen. On the right side, we have two nitrogen atoms. So in order to balance nitrogen, we need to times three, but divide by two. So that three divided by two times two give you three nitrogen atoms, okay? So now everything is balanced, but we have fractions as coefficient, and we want to eliminate fraction. To do that, we times two on both sides, okay? So two times every substance. So the first, uh, coefficient should be two times one is two. Second one, two times half is one. And the third one, two times three over two is three. And the fourth one, two times two is four. So these are the coefficients uh, for the balanced equation. Okay, and now let's uh, in, remove, uh, erase all this, okay, and uh, let me write, okay, and the uh, balanced equation. So this is the balanced equation, okay? Let's look at the question A. How many grams of nitrogen gas form when these grams of N2H4 and these grams of N2O4 are mixed? So the givens are the grams of these two reactants. So grams, grams. And the question is how many grams of the product? So remember, this uh, reaction equation tells you the stoichiometry based on the number of moles, not based on grams. And therefore, the first step, you need to convert grams to moles. OK, all of them to moles, all right? Also, because we have two, both reactants are given. So one of them may be the limiting reactant, okay? Only one will, will be consumed. The other one have left over. And so the product should depend on the reacting, the limiting reactant, okay? Not the other one. So you need to decide which one is the limiting reactant. And to do that, we uh, assume uh, one of them will react. For example, we assume all these uh, N N2H4 will react. How many moles of nitrogen will be formed? Okay, and we do the same for N2O4 
and find the product number of moles of nitrogen. And we can determine the smaller one is the, is the one comes from limiting reactants. So after we have limiting reactants, okay, then we can find uh, how many moles of the product will, will be formed. And from there, we can calculate grams. Okay, so again, uh, first grams to moles, the reactants from grams to moles, grams to moles, and then find the limiting reactant, reactant okay, and then from moles of reactants to moles of product, and from moles of product to grams of product. Here's the solution for A. Uh, we determine the uh, limiting reactant. Uh, first, we convert grams of N2H4 to moles of N2H4. Okay, we multiply by uh, molar mass or divide by molar mass. Okay, so grams grams cancel give you moles, right? So that's the number of moles N2H4. And then we assume all these will be consumed. We want to find out how many number of moles of product will form. Okay, so we start with moles of N2H4. Okay, we look at the reaction equation and uh, N2H4 and the product. Uh, so two moles N2H4 is equivalent to three moles nitrogen. We write uh, the uh, conversion factor. So moles N2H4, moles N2H4 give you moles of uh, nitrogen gas. All right, so this is the amount of nitrogen gas would form if all the uh, amount of N2H4 would be, would be consumed. Okay, so next we convert grams of N2O4 to moles by dividing by its uh, molar mass. Okay, and then we assume all these moles of N2O4 would be consumed. How, mu how many moles of product would form? Okay, so we again we times conversion factor, and this is one more N2O4 is equivalent to three moles nitrogen. So we write this conversion factor, and that gives you 6.51 moles of nitrogen. So compare these two product. Okay, so N2O4 produce more nitrogen than N2H4, and therefore the smaller one, okay, comes from the limiting reagent. So this N2H4, this is the limiting uh, uh, rea reactant, and this will have leftover, and uh, therefore, uh, so only uh, 4.68 moles of nitrogen will be cons uh, produced. Okay, not this amount. Okay, the six uh, 4.68 uh, is the nitrogen will be produced, and to calculate the grams, we use moles of nitrogen times molar mass of nitrogen. 28.02, and that gives you 131 grams of nitrogen gas. In B, it asks you to write the reaction table. So as usual, we write the reaction first. Okay, so that's the balanced reaction. And the initial amount, uh, number of moles, we already calculated in A. So these are the uh, number of moles of the reactants. Okay, from grams to moles, all right? So we calculate this uh, number of moles. Now, how do we determine the change? Well, we use the limiting reactant. Now, limiting reactant is N2H4, and therefore it should be uh, 3.12. All of them will be consumed for the limiting reactant. Now, how do you determine N2O4, okay, uh, how, and the change? Well, we look at the stoichiometry. Two moles N2H4 will consume one more N2O4. So this is N2O4 is half amount of N2H4. So you should divide by half. Okay, divide by two. All right, that gives you the uh, change for N2O4. Now another way to do it is to write a conversion factor. So you start with three. Uh, 0.12 moles of N2H4, okay, and then you look at the co the coefficient or stoichiometry, two moles N2H4, one more N2O4, so you write 
conversion factor two moles N to H4, one more N to O4, so moles N to H4, N to H H4 cancel each other. That will give you moles of N to O4. So again, you need to use 3.12 divided by 2. Okay, you get the same number here. Okay, to get this number, the nitrogen, so we again, we can write the uh, reaction, the uh, conversion factor. So 3, 1, 2, uh, moles of N to H4. Okay, that's this uh, uh, limiting rea uh, reactant times, okay, we look at the stoichiometry between these reactants and the product nitrogen. And the conversion factor is uh, two uh, moles, okay, N to H4, all right, is e equivalent to three moles of nitrogen gas, okay, so moles uh, N to H4 cancel each other, so you have 3.12 times 3 divided by 2, and that should give you this number, 4.68, and you, did, you do the same for water, okay, and then you get this number. And for the final, the reactants should be initial minus change. For the product, initial plus change. Okay, you should get these numbers. Here shows the stoichiometric relationships between all substances involves chemical reaction. And the key is this stoichiometry, okay, between reactants and the products based on the uh, reaction equation, all right, of the number of moles. So if you know the grams, okay, if, we, if you are asked to calculate grams or given grams or number of entities, you need to convert moles first and then use this stoichiometry to convert between one substance to another substance. And then you can convert from moles to grams or from moles to number of entities. For chemical reaction, the theoretical yield is the amount of product calculated using the molar ratios from the balanced equation or the stoichiometry. Okay, that's the theoretical yield. In reality, the yield uh, may, may, may be less than this. That's called the actual yield. The actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100 give you the percent yield. Simple problem 3.21. Silicon carbide is made by reacting sand, which is silicon dioxide, with powdered carbon at high temperature. Carbon dioxide monoxide is also formed. What is the percent yield if 51.4 grams of silicon carbide is recovered from processing 100 kilograms of sand. So first, let's write the balanced reaction equation. What are the reactants? When the reacting sand, so silicon dioxide is a reactant. Powder the carbon is the second reactant, so two reactants. And the product is the silicon carbide and carbon monoxide also formed. All right, so here is the uh, balanced reaction equation. Okay, um, what is asked for? It asks for the percent yield. Okay, as we already learned, percent yield is the actual yield divided by theoretical yield. Okay, so what is actual yield? Now, actual yield here tells you 51.4 kilogram of silicon carbide. Silicon carbide is the product. So that's the actual yield all right, given. And uh, do we have a theoretical yield? No, we need to calculate theoretical yield. Okay, so what is given? 100 kilogram of sand. Sand is silicon dioxide. So we know the grams of silicon dioxide, we need to calculate grams of silicon carbide. That, that would be the theoretical yield because this is calculated by the stoichiometry. 
all right? And then use the actual yield divided by theoretical yield, we get the percent yield. All right, so as we already know, uh, this reaction equation tells you stoichiometry based on the moles, not grams. So first, grams need to convert to moles, okay? And from moles, based on stoichiometry, we can calculate the moles of silicon carbide. And from moles, we can calculate the grams. All right, so first step, grams to moles of the reactants. And then stoichiometry, calculate the moles of product, and then calculate the grams of the product. Okay, so let me erase this. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so first, grams, uh, 100 kilogram of silicon, carb uh, silicon dioxide given, you need to convert to moles. So kilogram, first convert to grams. So one kilogram, 1,000 gram, all right? And then from grams, you, you uh, divide by molar mass. One more silicon dioxide is 60.09 gram of silicon oxide. So kilogram, kilogram give you gram. Gram, gram give you moles. And the answer is 1,664 moles silicon dioxide. All right, so we have moles of the reactants. Now we look at the reaction equation, the stoichiometry. One more silicon dioxide give you one more of silicon carbide. And therefore we know that the moles of silicon carbide should be also 1,664 moles uh, of the product. Now we can also start with uh, this moles and use stoichiometry as a conversion factor, all right? You should get the same number. So that's the moles of product. Next, we need to convert to grams. So use moles time, times uh, molar mass, give you grams, okay? And then you divide by 1,000. That give you kilograms because the actual uh, yield is in kilogram. So you want the unit to be consistent. So you get a kilogram. This is the theoretical yield. Okay, so according to the equation, we use the actual uh, yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. And the answer is 77%. And that is the uh, percent yield.